Ladies and gentlemen, this was the army that stunned the world and defeated the greatest military power of the time, the British Empire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bootless feet, minimal rations, and weather so bad that their muskets were rendered useless. The 2,400 men still left to General George Washington crossed the Delaware River that night and surprised the enemy in their bunks. And with a gallant charge into the streets of Trenton, they captured hundreds and secured one of the most unlikely military victories in the world's history. But more importantly, but more importantly, they galvanized a failing cause and ensured the creation of the United States of America, the greatest nation on the face of the planet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They, stuck a, they struck a blow for freedom and showed that when oppression threatens to extinguish its hope, enough good men would risk everything to preserve it. Those men, half frozen, shivering in their rags, they are our heritage. Their resolve, our inheritance. It's a reminder that we as a people have never been daunted by desperate odds. It's a reminder that our medal as a nation was forged in such moments. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the descendants of those soldiers who stayed steadfast in the darkest hour of our union's birth. You see, I look out upon this crowd and I see the sons and daughters of our revolution. I see families who take pride in their history of service, whether it's here at home or in uniform or dis on distant shores. I see that very same spirit in resolve that overcame every obstacle and adversity America has ever faced with unflinching devotion. You are the guardians and protectors of that spirit that was born on the battlefields of our revolution and built upon by every succeeding American generation. Sorry. Saratoga, Yorktown, Gettysburg, Normandy, Chosen, and Tet, Iraq, Afghanistan. Mm. And now our share of the legacy is melting into the past to be a part of our collective heritage as a people. It's a heritage that we all own, and it's the core of who we are as Americans. Yes, that's right. Our greatest strength is our strength of purpose in moments of great crisis. You see, as civilians, it's our duty to preserve our precious republic, using our sacred right to vote, organize and speak freely to ensure the survival of our institutions. As soldiers, members of the military, the oath that we gave was to defend the Constitution against all enemies. We are not agents of a regime, a dictator, or any government. We, ladies and gentlemen, we are the protectors of the revolution that liberated our people. Our duty has always been to those precious words. And without our blood, history would have swept those precious words away long ago. Right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. But we are all here today because those words are under assault again. Mm -hmm. But this time from within. The battle over the Second Amendment has been joined. And while the Senate delivered a victory for the Constitution last week, the war being waged against our inalienable rights as Americans is being prosecuted across our country in state legislatures and courtrooms. Yes. yes. From California to Connecticut, our right to keep and bear arms has been steadily eroded. And without the political forces needed to actually change the Constitution, many have sought to marginalize the Second Amendment in every way possible. Right. This is the new front line. Right. The battle over the Second Amendment. Yeah. Right. Yes. You see, because the Constitution, the Constitution has faced countless threats over the last two centuries, and it has survived intact because each generation.
faced those threats and rose to defend its precious words. This is our generation's time to take a stand. Right. That's right. For if we don't, and the Second Amendment falls, the First Amendment won't be far behind. Right. Right. Yes, how about the Fourth Amendment? And if we lose this battle, if we lose this battle, we will embolden those who wish to remake America into something it was never meant to be. They will take heart that our resolve is not the measure of our legacy. And they will press their attack with renewed vigor, I promise you. They will capitalize on our weakness because our Constitution is strong only if we are willing to protect it in uniform and in civilian clothes. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the guardians. When the enemies reach our shores, if they ever do, it is our sacred duty to take the musket from the mantle and muster it for battle. Because our freedom, our freedom was secured by rifles privately owned. The men who crossed the Delaware with our greatest leader shouldered weapons that they learned to fire as children. There were rifles handed down from father to son as each man stake in life. Those rifles became a symbol for our stand for human dignity. Our right to bear arms became an organic part of our national character. It has saved us from countless threats and become a symbol of that rugged self-reliance upon which our nation was built. This isn't a debate over hunting and target shooting. Oh, yeah. It is right. not. Right. It, is, it is a battle. It is a battle for the central nature of our identity and who we will be in the generations ahead. Keep talking. It's a battle for yeah. freedom. That's right. It's a God-given right to defend ourselves. Those who have declared war, those who have declared war on our inalienable rights do so with only one argument. Take guns away, and the population will be safer. No, it's not. Trade. Trade our hard-won legacy for security. Some say that in the press. Some say that in the halls of Congress. And some teachers actually make fourth graders write, I am willing to give up some of my rights to be safer. We have neither. See, we all know, and this is why we're here, that an argument like that has no merit. Destroy the Second Amendment, and we all know we won't be any safer. Right. You got it. You got but I will it, tell you on the flip side that if you take those rights away, we will forever alter our sense of rugged individualism. You see, because our greatest national strengths will be cast aside and the rifle will become a symbol of our lost past. It's our heritage. And we will never, and I mean never, be the same ne nation that for two centuries has spawned innovation, grown to economic and military greatness, and dared its people to always dream large. That, ladies and gentlemen, that is what the Second Amendment has meant to America. The rifle was a tool First of survival, then of independence, and then hell, hell of self-reliance. These are the cornerstones of our republic, and we can't just give them up. Right. 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 He's the first our I said it before and I'll say it again, our constitution, constitution is in peril. The time to join in common cause for its defense is now. If we don't take a stand, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if we don't take a stand, we will hand our children a tarnished legacy. That's right. Our republic will be forever weakened, and our liberties will be chipped away until our nation won't resemble the one we, ha we were handed from our fathers and forefathers before us. The Senate, yes, yes, the Senate handed us a victory, but the campaign continues on many fronts, and I promise you, that the cause is a righteous one. Because those words penned so long ago have not only been the bedrock of America's freedom, 
They've been the force of liberation for oppressed and terrorized people throughout the world. In the darkest night, those inalienable rights have glowed like a beacon, offering hope to those languishing in chains. In the bootsteps of our warriors, freedom has flourished from the Argonne Forest in World War I to the 38th parallel in the mud and the snow of, in Korea. The Constitution isn't just the cornerstone of our lives. It's a symbol for all humankind the world over. The fight just isn't just about the Second Amendment. It's about the future. Right. It's about what we want our nation to look like as a people. Self-preservation. If we don't take a stand now, freedom's fragile flame will eventually be snuffed out. Yep. That's right, Davy Crockett. And along with it, humanity's last hope to a fractured and war-torn world. So I'm asking you, I'm asking you to remember who you are. Remember what metal you've been forged from as Americans. Remember your proud and noble heritage. And don't let your Second Amendment rights be eroded away. Fight on. Go home and get involved. Vote, lobby, protest, write letters, campaign for leaders who believe as we do. Volunteer your time with these great people. Take action now, and we will hold our ground. Hold the line, united in purpose, drawing upon that that same resolve and dedication of American generations past. And if we do that, if we do that, those precious words, the, the Constitution of the United States will be delivered to our sons and daughters. Hope, freedom, liberty. America, I promise you, if we take a stand, we will weather this storm and shine more brightly than ever before. Yeah. Yes. This is our hour, our duty, and our cause. So thank you all so much for having me. God bless you all, and God bless America. Thank you to uh, Sean Parnell once again. Sean's a U.S. Army Ranger. Sorry, He's a sir. retired Sorry captain. And uh, appreciate uh, appreciate uh, Sean's service. He also has a couple of Purple Hearts that, that he received for uh, during his service. So we appreciate his uh, his putting his life on the line as as uh, General Schneider and Commander Root and so many of the other veterans that are here today. Yes, before I introduce our, our final speaker here, Larry Pratt with Gun Owners America. Larry's been with us uh, pretty much every rally I think we've had over the last eight years. We appreciate his support. He was one of our first big speakers coming in in the very first rally, and he's been supportive of our efforts here ever since, and we thank Larry for that. And uh, as, uh, as Larry approaches the microphone, uh, some of my colleagues you heard from today, they talked about some of the bills that they've introduced. We have a sev several pieces of legislation to try and lead an offensive strategy and gain back some of our Second Amendment, some of our Article 1, Section 21 has been taken away from us in the past. Castle Doctrine was a huge effort for us over many years that we regained last session. But we haven't stopped fighting. We're continuing the effort to regain our freedom of areas that they've infringed our, our rights in the past. And our strongest offensive effort so far, some of the signs out here, House Bill 357, to tell the federal government we will not accept any more gun control in Pennsylvania. Mr. Larry Pratt. Woo! Fellow patriots, good to be here. Yeah. 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 I probably just put you on uh, Janet Napolitano's watch list by <laughs> saying that. And I'm sorry that I failed. I was not able to get Piers Morgan to come. <laughs> and explain why we should rethink the Deport. war for independence because he thinks he knows better and that we should go back home to Mama Britain. But I think we're here today to tell the king and those wannabe kings here in the United States and the ruling class ain't gonna happen. Isn't it interesting that the ruling class, and I'm thinking now of the one that 
uh, puts itself in power as the ruling class in Washington, they think that they should be able to decide which of us would be able to own a gun, to purchase a gun. And yet they have run a program on purpose that got people murdered called Fast and Furious. Yeah, that's right. This is not a ruling class that deserves power. This is a ruling class that needs to go home. Yeah. It's an international problem. It's in our DNA from Adam and Eve. Um, we, um, I had a debate one time on CNN International with a British member of parliament. It could have been uh, Piers Morgan's cousin. He said he was a conservative. But that's what a lot of people say in Europe. And what it really means is kind of a liberal Democrat. I'm not kidding. We, we are blessed to be here in this country where we have some real constitutionally minded people around us and behind us here. So I, I pointed out to this uh, poor Brit that um, actually... If he went, this was back in 2006, I think, right before they enacted their uh, horrible, nearly total gun ban. I said, if, if you go ahead and do this, you Tories, you conservatives, you're going to end up seeing an increase in your violent crime rate in this country because that's what we know happens in America. We have different jurisdictions, different laws. We know that's going to happen. I'm not a prophet. I'm just telling you that if I drop a penny from here, it's going to hit the floor. That's not prophecy. And That's he said, oh, I say, sense. anybody that would say that over here, we'd say he's quite flaky. I said, I know you would. That's why we're no longer British. Yeah. 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 Your being here says we will not submit. We are free men. You guys back in there work for us. That's Don't right. forget it. Right. We're the boss. We're the boss. I wish I had enough time to pass on the wisdom of double barrel Joe Biden, but, but I'll pass on that because evidently you all have already imbibed. So thanks for coming. I'm going back to lobby uh, with Gun Owners of America back in Washington, and we're going to keep up the fight, folks. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Larry Pratt, Gun Owners of America, and we appreciate the, the work that Larry's been doing over many years to uh, defend our Second Amendment in D.C. and around the country. So thank you, Larry, for your continued leadership and efforts, and uh, we look forward to working with you as we move forward to uh, defend the Second Amendment. Well, once again, thank you uh, for everybody that was here today. We appreciate you coming out. I encourage many of you, as many as possible, to... Walk the halls today if you have time to stay with us for a, for a while today. I expect we're going to be going into session here at 11 o'clock. Um, I talked to the Speaker's office yesterday. He thought that we'd break for lunch, which we don't always do. So if there's a break in lunch, then members should be rotating back to the cafeteria and to their offices that you might be able to grab hold of a few legislators today and talk with them uh, personally. If they're not there, talk with their chiefs of staff. I know there's some teams that have been put together, and I was asked to announce that uh, at the conclusion of the rally that uh, the groups that have been assigned to certain leaders, team leaders, that are going to go through the Capitol and lobby today, if you'll meet in the main rotunda through these doors behind me. Now, the lines, there's going to be a line going through this door, of course. If you ha are armed today and you want to check your handgun at the door, as you'll need to going into the Capitol, you'll need to go around to the rear entrance of the Capitol. That's where they that's where they have the lockers and where they're able to uh, take, take uh, the weapons from you and check them until you leave the Capitol for the day. So uh, if you have weapons, you'll need to go around back. If you don't have weapons, you can go straight through the front door, uh, make your way through security, and uh, enjoy your Capitol today. It's uh, great that you were all able to be here. But I, I think it's important that as we, as we, uh, as we conclude the rally, today um, that uh, we all do what uh, what uh, Commander Root had done and, and, and General Snyder and uh, Captain Parnell and, and my many colleagues behind me. That we've, we've all sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution. And for all those hands or veterans, you all swore to uphold and defend the Constitution. That's right. That's but right. you don't have to take the oath How about law to do so. As an American, as a patriotic American, I encourage you to embrace the oath that all of us have taken to defend your Constitution Absolutely. and defend it against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Now, uh, Mr. Larry Pratt had mentioned uh, 
That knucklehead they have in the White House as the Vice President and his uh, crazy comments on double-barreled shotguns telling his wife take it off on a balcony and shoot it off if there was a problem, not knowing who she might hit when she did so, and that she'd be like ultimately the victim after she just unloaded the shotgun outside the balcony instead of at the, the uh, invaders coming into home. So... We're not giving away a, sh a shotgun today. Well, there's usually a giveaway at the end of the rally uh, that uh, we've had um, many times uh, given away a, a firearm here before at the conclusion of it. And today, uh, George Romanoff of A Sporting Goods in Washington, PA, he's donated a Smith & Wesson 380. I don't think he, he liked the idea of the double barrel. I think he thinks this is going to be a little bit better for self-defense. Um, so we can uh, we, we don't have the shotgun, but we have a 380. I'm, I'm sure uh, Biden would have a fit over it. So, <laughs> oh, well. Mr. Romanoff, thank you for all of your many uh, donations for the door prizes and uh, Chris Smith is with him and uh, if you guys would like to draw draw the uh, draw the winner hey Daryl just just before I just like to I just like to thank all, all you ladies and gentlemen for coming out and making this rally such a success and also on behalf of my fellow Pennsylvania firearms dealers I would like to thank you for your continued support and your patience with the pick system Again, we thank you so much, and we're all in this together. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And many of us would like to get rid of picks and go just to next. And we want to also thank not only uh, our store for donating this, but Smith & Wesson for being a great supporter of the firearms industry. The winning, the winning number is 410-248. Now, if you are the winner, you can see me right after the rally. You can pick up the firearm at our store, or we can ship it to a dealer in other parts of the state. Again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. George Romanoff of Ace Sporting Goods in Washington, PA. And, and George has donated other, other firearms that were given away at the uh, conclusion of the rally in years past. And uh, you all have a, a great day. And, and God has certainly blessed us with, uh, with great weather today. We were hoping the, the rain would hold off. And, and God bless us with a great day to rally here at the Capitol. So enjoy your day at the Capitol. Have a safe journey home. And keep up the fight to protect our Constitution, our American way of life. Everyone have a great day. Yes, sir.